Hi guys, Sandy here. In this video today, we're gonna to talk about an area of the court that we're constantly referencing when it comes to tactics, and that is no man's land. Now, most players know that they should not be coming into this area of the court, or at least should not be staying in this area of the court, but what happens is they're following the ball, they're following the point, and before they know it, subconsciously, they slip into this position, and therefore, it's very difficult then for them and their partner to win that point. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how you end up getting into this position and why you shouldn't be in this position when it's acceptable sometimes to step into this position and also what to do if you or your partner get into this position and how to get back into the correct position. If you find this Paddle Tactics video useful, please share it because I know there are so many players that get stuck in no man's land, they don't really know why they shouldn't be here or how to get out of it. So this is a particularly useful one. Also, please subscribe because the more players that watch the channel, the more we can grow Paddle internationally. So when we're talking about no man's land, we're talking about the area from the second post right the way up to the service line. And we're not describing moving into this area, hitting a ball and then going back into position. That's absolutely fine. The problem comes when players are hitting that shot and they end up waiting in this area of the court because from here, there's a couple of problems. First of all, you're too far back in the court to have effective volleys. They can end up having a big space that they can hit to in front of you. That means you're playing the ball off your feet hitting the ball up for them, which is easier for them. And secondly, you're too far forward to defend properly from the back of the court. So if your opponents are at net and they're being attacking and you're in this position, it's very difficult to, for you to defend because you've got this space behind you. They can hit the volley either down the middle of the court, forcing you backwards towards the angle, or they can hit around the side of you off that side glass, meaning they've got a big space behind you. So this is the reason that you don't want to get stuck in this part of the court. When we're talking about how players end up in this area, there are two main ways. First of all, being impatient from the back of the court. Now, this is often a mistake from tennis players that they're chipping and charging and net rushing when their opponents are already at net. So they're hitting that ball and coming forward, trying to force their way in, but they get stopped here because the second ball comes down to their feet and they haven't got time to go all the way to the net. So what you want to do in this situation is take your time, wait for the right ball, lob your opponents, and then move all the way up to the correct net position because if you try and force your way in from the back of the court then you're just going to get stuck in that no man's land and then you're going to be in trouble. The other way is moving back from the net position. So you might be in a good volley position and this either might be where the player is hitting a volley and kind of shifting their way back and they end up finding their way back into this position from the volley or it might be where you're in the net position, your opponents hit a lob, you move back to hit your defensive smash or bandeja and you don't recover properly as you should after that shot. You end up staying here and watching what's happening and then it's easy for your opponents to hit down to your feet and then come forward off that shot because you're forced to hit up. We talked about an occasion when it might be all right to step into this area. And if you watch the World Paddle Tour players, you see that they come into this part of court a lot. And there's two main reasons for that. They're either avoiding a more difficult ball. For example, they're in their back position here and they can see that person's hit a good vibra and instead of trying to play it off that back glass, they might come forward into this position and block the ball and therefore stay there to see what happens next with their shot. Or it might be to take advantage of a situation that they can then attack. So that first one is why they're trying to avoid defending. The second one might be if they hit a really good kind of chiquita down to the feet and then they come forward to take an early ball and to take advantage in the point. Those are the two main reasons that they move into this area. The other thing is that those guys at that top level anticipate and move so well that they can stay in this position for one shot, the ball will then either go backwards and they play and they go back to defense, or they can see an advantage in the point and from here they take one or two steps and they move quickly into position. If you notice, you don't see them staying here for more than one or two shots because from there they've worked out whether they're gonna be attacking in the point or defending and they move from there. I don't advise players from kind of beginner to high intermediate to come into this area at all if they can help it because it can be difficult to analyze the points. When you're at the top level, those guys obviously know what they're doing and they can anticipate almost everything that comes from their opponents. 
So now we're going to talk about what happens when you get into this position and how to get out of it. Now, we're going to assume that your partner is in the correct position. So your partner is either at the back or they're at net. So what you need to do on your next shot is to try and neutralize the point and join them wherever they might be. So that might be if your partner's at the back, you hit a lob here and then join them at the back of the court so you're together. Or if your partner's at the front of the court, that might mean hitting a volley or a bandeja from this position into the corners off the glass so you can move up quickly and join your partner. Now, if you're both in this position, that's obviously not an ideal scenario. You need to look at where your opponents are. So if your opponents are at the back of the court, you want to try and hit a half volley or volley in towards the back of the court and both take the net position. If your opponents are at net, you want to try and hit a neutral ball, whether that's one down to the feet or to the lob, and then decide, are you attacking in the point or defending in the point? If you're attacking in the point, then yes, come forward, but come forward together and be attacking. If your opponents are attacking and it looks like you're defending, then play a neutral ball and both of you go to the back of the court. One thing that we see a lot is that one player gets out of position and the opponents don't take advantage of this. They end up hitting the balls to the person that's in the correct position. Now, if that happens to you, you're in the wrong position and the ball goes to your partner, whatever happens, move back to join them. Don't stay in this position and then watch what happens because you're gonna be out of position for the next shot. And if you're playing against players that are out of position, you see one or two of them are in that no man's land, then make them pay for it. Hit down to the gaps, hit down to their feet and try and force them to play difficult shots. The best way to get better at this is to just constantly give yourself a reference. So when you're starting the point, just check where you're starting the point, align with where you need to be on the court. And when you finish the point, just have a little look where you're standing to check you're in the correct position. And when you get caught in no man's land, just give yourself a mental reminder that you need to decide either to get to the front court position or the back court position. Now we've got a new tactics course that covers all the areas of tactics. It's the most comprehensive course that we've got on the paddleschool.com. I'm gonna put the link over on this side and in the description, but here we talk about every area of the game from taking the net, keeping the net, finishing the points, how to play defense to attack, everything that you would need if you want to play better matches.